Hallelujah. Job 22, 28. Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and light shall shine upon thy heart. First Kings 17, verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be rain, nor dew this year's, but according to my word. He did not even say according to the word of God. God bless you, can have your seats. Can a believer speak like this? Wow. As you go from place to place in God's word, there is this gift of unction, utterance, that you will see in the lives of some people and that sincerely every Christian craves for it. But only few people. Because somehow people know that if you are able to operate this dimension, your Christianity will be real to people around you. For instance, the situation around the world, let's say in the country now, and somebody gets up to speak like Elisha, or Elijah here. Elijah just said to Ahab, Ahab was the most wicked king that time. And he said, there shall be no rain, no deal, until I say so. And he disappeared. Then this same Elijah handed over to Elisha, and I quoted that earlier, 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1. There was famine in Samaria, and people started boiling their children to eat. And a woman cried to the king. That's all in chapter 6. And then the king got angry, and he said, you know what, I'm going to kill Elisha. Why do we have a prophet in town? Even as wicked as the king was, he understood that if a prophet can just show up, this situation will be redeemed. It will be reversed. Something will happen. In other words, even men who did not exactly know God in Old Testament understood that at the level of a prophetic dimension, the impossible, now, you can begin to confess I, Lord, I thank you. I believe you for 50 million. When it gets to prophetic level, what the difference there will be that it sounds like before 5 p.m. on Monday, I have 50 million, and it is said openly, and if it's a prophetic utterance behind it, that 50 million is inevitable. Now, I'm not, um, I use money because people can relate to that very easily. Amen. It's a common stuff. I get what I'm saying. Yes. Or somebody says, there is a wicked fellow tormenting everybody. I remember, in the University of Ibadan, where I went to, they told me the story when I came in. I think my brother was there when it happened. But I met him. So there was this event that was a, I don't want to mention, that used to be a ground for all kinds of terrible sexual stuff. That after hosting it in the body, you see condom and everything on the floor, and it was backed by school authority. Yes. The, a club that has a name, I'm, I'm, I'm a, on TV, when you are on, you have to be very careful about mention. So the purpose of the gospel is not to attack or indict anybody. So I, I won't mention. Now, there's a big club in town that used to sponsor this. It's a legal club recognized by the federal government of Nigeria. They do a lot of charity work. They are good people. But they back this party, and the end result of the party is not always very good. And the school authority will be there. So 1995, Bishop Francis, why look, he came to UI to pray. They constructed that stage that was shaking like this. As he mounted the stage, and they did the program on that ground, he just said, you could see that his countenance changed. And he said, they called this ground, and they mentioned the name of that program. But they used to call that ground by that program. He said, but the Christian people are using the ground today. 
He said, I decree right now that program, and they called the name, I cancel it from UI Diary right now. It holds no more. And he just started preaching. 1995. I was in UI between late 99 and 2004 or 5. Till that time. Now, interestingly, when I was in final year, I just want to show you the power of prophetic word. And how do we get there? And every person is craving for this because under this influence, let them say one man is a demonic possessed man tormenting whole family. It can be executed in one day. Because the Lord will offer repentance, but when the prophet is at work, it can be for blessing and for judgment. And we are going to go through the Bible to see. For pro can be for blessing and for judgment. And when the judgment against evil lingers too long, the prophetic is missing. And many more people will be injured. I get what I'm saying. Yes. So, I, Baligo Sulamande Brachizos. It's a man that you know in the Southwest very well, and that is Reverend Shola Arego, that was praying for a, a lady. And he paused and he said that, your father, Everything involved about your getting mad is satan. Now, he's a teacher of the world. People are careful about this thing. But he just said, it has to do with, and tell your father, Jesus suffering an opportunity to repent. If he does it, judgment will come in. And the man still refused. I don't know whether he is my man or God. He refused. I told the lady, he said, Neil, I said, in Jesus' name, you marry this year. And as you do, the person holding you back relocates. And in three months, that was exactly what happened. The prophetic came in as a sword. When this man said, when I came to school, my 300 level or so, I saw poster of this program all around, and the VC gave them $5 million or so. It was endorsed by school authority. And the posters were all over. And I was curious to see that eight years after, when the word of God fail, they put the date and time, and they put it all over UI. A week to the program, they scattered everything. When I was in final year, I was the president of the Joint Christian Fellowship UI. Now, this club now had a president that was a Christian and he was staying on my floor. So he sent a message to me. He said, we heard the prophecy. He said, let me tell you what happened last year. That our club supplied millions. We got the DJ, one of the most popular DJs in Nigeria. We got everything ready. Last meeting, we scattered everything, fought, and everybody went back to his room and the program ended. He said, we are collecting money from school authority. They had given us letter of approval for the, everything was said. We had paid the DJ, paid for his hotel. He said, but we cannot explain. He now said, Shola, now I'm a Christian. He said, I guarantee you, they won't rape any, all those funny things will not happen again. That it will just say, we'll do concert, but we'll not allow any kind of thing because I'm a Christian and I'm in charge now. He said, so I want to invite you for a meeting. Just to assure you that we'll then come and pray for us so that the meeting will hold. Because him being a Christian, you have to be very careful. Compassion grip my heart. So I said, okay. They said, one o'clock. They mentioned a particular place. I remember that day, I had the lecture till 12. By 12, I went to my room after 12, and I was about to go for the meeting, and I heard the word of the Lord. My servant stopped something. Now you represent the Christian in the school. If you go for that meeting, they will have that program, and you are held responsible. I picked my phone, and I called the guy, and I'm so sorry. Till I left to I. Later, the only thing they could do was to go outside UI to do that program there. The Bible says he upholds all things by the word of his power. The reason why the sun has not fallen down, there is a word holding it. Now, by this word, everything was made, including Lucifer. So there is nothing that escapes prophetic words. But it's not a word at this level. I might not read it, but I want to call your attention. Hebrews chapter 6. Let's begin to look at some dangerous part of... Listen, Christianity is deep. But there are levels. It's like the river that Ezekiel saw. When you speak, your word can be anointed to ankle level. The angel showed Ezekiel, Ezekiel for the seven, the river. And he measured, he measured a thousand cubits. These are levels of grace. At that level, the water reached the ankle. And he measured another one thousand. And Ezekiel walked through the water and he got to his knee. And he measured another 1,000. He got to his waist. 
and he measured the final 1,000. It became a river swimming in. That final 1,000, that level 4, okay, that's, but go just, that level 4, go back, go to that Hebrews chapter 6. That level 4 is what we see. They are the people that God said, if they backslide, to renew them again. Hebrews 6, verse, let's start from that, verse, verse 2. Three. He said, This we do if God permits. Yeah, verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. <laughs> I use I read one section one that I put the word that enlightened, Illuminati. <laughs> so people call it Illuminati in America. The real Illuminati people are the people enlightened by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Illuminati just means that people that live people of light or people that can watch something about light. But the real light is the word of God. Jesus is the true light. All other lights are who have tasted the heavenly gifts. Look at this word. And were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. In other words, a mortal man can get to a point. He becomes a partaker of the Holy Ghost. That means when he speaks, the Holy Ghost has spoken. That means that word can never fail. Some men have entered in and they came out in the some before Jesus comes. So I'm saying to rise on that and enter. When people are operating at that level, I'll show you what will happen. Part of those who enter it a little bit into it was Apostle Peter. When Ananias and Sapphira lied, Acts chapter 5, Peter did not say, he looked at the man. He said, you have not lied to man, you have lied to God. Was he calling himself God? The guy was lying to Peter. Peter was one asking that he didn't say lie for much. But see, it was not Peter talking that day, that time. The Holy Ghost are taking over. Peter become at that moment a partaker of the Holy Ghost. So his words were as powerful. So when he said to the guy that, and then you shall die. The guy just fell down there and died. And the same thing his wife. Because he was a partaker. It's a level reserve. Because the journey there is a bit tough. Because when you are there, what you say from there is a law. You can shut down an entire nation. Family is small. The king somehow knew that Elisha had it. And why are we suffering? And when they were suffering, through Elisha to sat down. But when the king said, okay, no problem. Let's cook, cook, kill him. So we know that we don't have a prophet. As his sword man was coming, when he saw sword, prophecy came out. As he saw his head, he said, hey. and why did God speak to him? God didn't speak. He spoke from his spirit. You see, grace has dimensions. Oh, yeah. See, this is why Christianity is an adventure. Be excited about knowing more of God. There is no end to this knowledge. Now, go back to that Hebrew 6. Partakers of the Holy Ghost. Then the Bible uses one word again. The Bible said those who have tasted the enlightened one, number one. Number two, those who have tasted heavenly gifts. Number three, partakers of the Holy Ghost. Number four, is more powerful. He used one very powerful name. Next verse. Who have tasted the good word. The good word. Then he moved to the fifth one. That good one will lead to the fifth one. The powers of the age to come. Mm. We will continue next week. Whenever I stop, the power of the age to come. See, this is one age. In this age that we are in now, where we are now, you go and do things. In the age to come, that is what we shall be operating on where rapture happens and we are there. That's God's level. At that level, God does not go about doing things. He only speaks. Yes, did you get what I've just said now? Yes, Solomon asked God for wisdom. God did not pour oil on him. He did not touch him. He just said, I have given you wisdom. Have you, have you, have you read that one? And he left that room. He became wiser than all men in Old Testament. Because God will only speak. When he wanted to create heaven and earth, he did not start... Okay, river, go this way. Tree, go this way. The Bible says God said and God saw. God said and God saw. When a man is elevated to this level, anything you say, you will see it. But because the Lord knows how dangerous this power can be in the hand of a man, it takes time and it takes consistency. It takes brokenness. The shortest call to it, unfortunately many people don't know, it's not fasting and prayer. First and the shortest call to it is for love to dominate your heart. Yeah. 
Harvard. I get what I'm saying. In 24 hours, Elisha changed the economy of an entire nation. To the point that even the guy that listened to that prophet, it's like saying that by this time tomorrow, bread will now become five naira. And our fuel will become seven naira. <laughs> well, I'm not saying so. <laughs> I don't have the unction on me to say that right now. So, I get what I'm saying. So, it's like, so when the king's servant heard, he said, he, he, the guy was trying to calculate, how can this be? You know, there are Christians right now. I see them on Facebook. Who still doubt God's ability to, and we are not saying God, but you see, let's be realistic. God, when he wants to move, is not realistic. He himself is reality. Are you hey. get what I'm saying? It's because they don't know who God is. They put in the class of man that you start thinking, okay, for economy to go down, you will do this. Uh, the, the, uh, God doesn't need all that. That's why he's called the Almighty. He sits on his throne and he says, economy, go down or go up. That's it. He has too many power, too many forces that will be deployed when he speaks to make sure that everything happens. When Elisha spoke, there were four lepers. People at this level, anything they say, angels go into action to move things. Somebody was there who need possibly that put to. There was a lady at the shop somewhere in Lagos here and said that for years, no sale. They were almost as as but they imported everything in and locked it up. Nobody was. They were about to look for somebody that will buy. They were selling at a loss. They would lose the shop and lose everything inside. And she ran into Bishop Edepo. He just said that I don't have time to go into shop to pray. Pray. He said, but I'm a little bit around that area. That was some years ago. He just came down, pointed to the shop that clothes sell and left and went enter his car. The following morning, he did that since the evening, came to pray Lagos. The following morning, a trailer reversed and a rich man came down from the trailer. I said, everything in your shop, put it inside his car. He said, we've been looking for this kind of product. And he said, we need all of that product here. The guy emptied the shop in one day. See, when God wants to work, he wants to know that it is, it is God. What man can never do. Because he's Jehovah overdue. He said, I come that they may have life. How? Have it more abundantly. The Lord does not give you what you have lost. He gives you beyond what you have lost. He is excessive in nature. Unto him that is able to do how? Exceedingly, abundantly, above. That is his nature. Praise God. Are you following me? Glory to God. But this, this, how do we begin to journey into this? Don't live an ordinary life as a Christian. But I want to begin from the, the little part of it. You see, whether you talk of Elisha or Elijah or Joshua that he was fighting, ah, my Yabakizo, and he said, Son, stand still. That was not even the correct prayer. If you understand geography, the sun does not stand. Or does not move. It is the earth that rotates around the sun. But the forces understood what he was saying. The earth actually stood still. At the word of one man. And this same Joshua, he was not a prophet. When Joshua was, when they conquered Jericho, he stood at the entrance of Jericho. And he said, Cursed be any man who built this city again. He will lay the foundation at the death of his son. And he will complete it at the death of his last born. He said, anybody that builds Jericho as a starting, his first son will die. As a finishing, his last born. And the Bible records many years that a man that built Jericho, his first born died when he started, and the last. What that old an area? When you are in Lagos and you say something, mommy and grandma, they are saved by what you have said. Kidnappers are kept away. Attacks. The end time wickedness is beginning to demand that Christians must show this dimension. The world is not going to get better. And the ungodly laws coming out of the nations of the earth is forcing us because when you see the darkness, there is only one thing. 
If you read before Elijah came out to say that about that uh, uh, there shall not be rain, there shall not be dew. The whole of chapter 16 was talking about the wickedness of Ahab the king. The Bible now put it in bracket. There was no king in Israel that was as wicked as Ahab who sold himself to wicked works. He became devil incarnate. And at that point, other prophets were talking little, little. Elisha knew that the prophetic dimension of this kind of darkness has to be real. The darkness we live in, we are privileged to be chosen to be fighting these last days. The days where people enjoy bashing churches, attacking churches, and saying all sorts, and they are weakening the hands of some people. I would say, Jesus said, you shall be hated by all nations my name's sake. Yes. Every other religion, people avoid touching them. Christians only like comedians with bash on this one, bash on pastor with bash on everybody. It's a prophecy. It's one of the last days where there will, a time will come, there will not be adverts without pornography. Even if they have advertised don't love tire or tire, they will put, we are getting to that where there will not be any movie again that does not have pornography parts. Or this, uh, uh, the, 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 we are getting, it's the last days. All kinds of laws coming out. You see some nations now are done in bestiality and passing it to law. Yeah. 1989, Dr. Lester Soma stood up. He was in Philippines. He built the largest church in Philippines and God told him to go to, back to America. They were demonstrating in Philippines and he stood up to challenge those who are protesting because he became a national name there. He was a missionary that built 100,000 churches and he wanted to stay there. And Lord said, go back to America. And as I sat in this office in Philippines, God said, seven things that will happen in America. And God started telling him all the seven that Eastern religion will take center stage. And that's what he said. He said, God, let someone start a cry. He said he nearly died. He said he did not believe. And God said that, I am the Lord. I'm telling you that this is 1989 or so, that by 2000 or so, America will change. That will shock you. In the parliament, they will swear by something other than, by which already happening. It was already swore by Satan. He said, you will see things that will shake you. The Bible said, because iniquity shall work, the love of many will work. They will become neither here nor there. But see, Light needs darkness to shine. Just get a very bright light. This is what I'm saying. That's what I just said. Let your light so shine. Little, little light might be intimidated at this time. Prophetic word. I get what I'm saying. So let's, I want to look at step by step in how a saint can move from one dimension to another in this thing. But the one I want to leave, leave with us today. It's just that, uh, let's look at 1 Timothy, give me 1 Timothy, sorry, 2 Timothy chapter 1, the last verse, or last, let's read the last two verses. Are you following me? You see, prayer is more than saying that, Lord, give me this. The journey to what I'm talking about begins with, if you are praying about something, and you let the Holy Ghost give you a word, when you release that word with your mouth, if that word is from God, something happens. That's the beginning of demonstrating the supernatural. Yes. See, many times, I don't know why I feel like making this dwelling here and then we can see. Listen to me. Don't be too quick to rush out when you finish praying. And don't be more interested in what you are saying to God than what God has to say to you. Last service, I spoke about the word of God and that it's still on the word. You can't do without this scripture. So many times, stop going to pray, leaving your Bible behind. 1,000 words from you to God is not as powerful as one word from God to you. Say amen. amen. So one of the reasons why we pray is so that God can speak to us. Forget about audible voice. He can use that at times. He can use visions at times. But it will use the word more. Pay attention to the word. Sometimes a scripture and at times gentle whisper of the voice of God in your heart. That's the beginning. Now, the Bible says, no, it says 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 2 Peter, not 2 Peter 1, the last two verses. 2 Peter 1, the last two verses. 2 Peter 1, the last two verses. Are you with me? Knowing this first, no prophecy of the scripture 
is of any private interpretation. We are going to look at next week different kinds of prophecy. And I will separate them. There is the gift of prophecy. There is the office of a prophet. There is what is called the spirit of prophecy. And then there is what is called the word of prophecy. The word of God is a prophetic word. But you see, it is coded. It comes alive when the Holy Spirit breathes on it and talks to you from it. Otherwise, the letter kills it. I get what I'm saying. It's like, what can I liken this to? The difference between the egg that you eat, you crack, eat and fry, and the one that becomes a chicken, a chick. One is sat upon, one has not been sat upon. The word of God, if you don't sit on it in meditation, in prayer, will be like ordinary word. When you begin to pray, and you begin to look at scripture as you pray, there is nothing you cannot change. When in the place of prayer you keep looking at the word of God, let, let me end by, I don't know if somebody is getting me. All the scriptures you think you know, if you are reflecting over them and you are praying, the Holy Spirit will show you something from it that you have never known. It will require an action based on that word. That's why that uh, 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 Joshua 1 it says, the book of law shall not depart of your mouth. Thou shalt meditate, that thou mayest observe to do. As you meditate, you will observe. There is something inside that word. When you observe to do, then something happens. So in other words, every scripture carries an instruction. At the level of reading, it looks like you have just studied the Bible. But if you are praying and you are looking at that scripture, after a while, life comes out of that scripture from the scripture and instruction comes. Once it gets to the level of instruction, something supernatural will happen. I get what I'm, what I'm... A lady was sick and they were about to... Diabetes, about to remove the leg. She had been reading this in Psalm one day as she was praying in tongues, going through the Bible, just saw that it will not suffer your feet to be moved. I told the doctor, no, don't amputate me again. Say, boy, it will spread. And a few days after they checked her again, she was perfectly okay. The scripture was a letter to her before. How many people get to what I'm saying? That Bible in your house wants to talk to you. We begin by praying and we are opening the scripture. It might not happen day one. After when you start discovering that your life is coded in that scripture, the Holy Spirit will start talking to you. And it will come in form of, then you will see an instruction thou shalt observe to do. When you do a miracles are inevitable. It's actually the level one where every Christian must begin from. You see, the level where you say to a nation, I don't know the grace that this brother walked in. He was my brother's colleague, 1994 or 95. I can't remember which year, one of the two years. That was when Federal Republic of Nigeria shifted jam. This guy stood before us and he said that, I have just finished praying and I've been led to declare. He said, I told God in the place of prayer that I'm not ready enough for jam. And he made a decree that jam will be shifted. Now, some people say that when God shifted for some reasons, but he made the decree and it worked. That year, government shifted jam by six months. But this guy made a public declaration before government said so that this will happen. Let me show you Micah 7 11. Micah 7 11. The story, I think it was 1994, 95 jam. I can't remember that. My brother told me because he was his friend. And I know the guy actually, he's actually a doctor right now. Let me read this thing. In the day that thy walls are to be built, in that day shall the decree be far removed. Look at this now. What does it mean to you? There was a time, I, I, again, I, don't, I love to be very accurate, but I don't know which year, that the number of years that you practice under somebody as a lawyer, before you go and start your own chambers. Nigerian government had a particular year. There is a man of God that you all know very well, who used to be a lawyer. He's a lawyer, he's a pastor now. He was working in somebody's chambers and he, was, he felt it was time to step out to start his own. Maybe let's say they said five years. I'm not, I don't remember how many years. I'm not concerned with law. 
and he was on his third year and he was to start. He began to pray that, Lord, I want to step out to start. And the Lord gave him this word. That in the day that I wash, I'll be good. The decree shall fire removed. Within one week, the president then Nigeria came on TV and reduced the number of years, let's say from five to three years. Now, if you have served for three years, another lawyer you can go and start your own chamber, something like that. I don't need to tell the story, but a decree was crashed by federal governments. God gave him this word. In the day that thy war shall be built, you know what I'm trying to establish this morning? Many Christians don't know how much power is in what to keep in your house. And as someone put under their pillow, it does not work from under pillow. You don't open it and put your head on it. If a demon wants to torment you, you will first of all remove it from your head, close it, and beat you. Because this is letter. But as you fellowship with it, nothing changes the nature of a man or a woman in marriage. Prayer does not necessarily change you. It can, but it does not work like that at all times. So there are people who fast, when they are through the fasting, they still beat blue black out of their wife. It is the word of God that changes. That you are fasting for something does not stop you from being selfish, greedy. It could if you allow it, but the only thing that changes a man. So when a person is fasting and studying, eh, eh, ancient world, ever true, changing me, I'm changing you, we have come. This is where it is. And there are many people seated and people listening to me. I know that I'm challenging you because you are missing beautiful things. Power is here. When you start on that note and you are moved, then the Lord will step you, thank you, man, to another level. And you know what? You can become so trained in spiritual things that actually you begin to speak to nations. Because as you train yourself in this, a time comes that the voice is now very familiar you know what the Spirit of God is saying now from time to time. You can come out and make a bold declaration. And the Bible says, Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established. Yes. At the beginning, you might not be able to speak about your states. But there is one more thing. <laughs> My time is up. We will start this next week. Among the nine gifts of the there is a gift that is called gift of faith. I have found out that when you pray for a, pro, a long period of time, repeatedly in tongues, you might be suddenly baptized or you might find the gift of faith or pray to That was the gift that Joshua used. It's a gift that you say something actually is beyond you. You would have said before you realized and nothing stops it. He was fighting, he was getting that. He did not premeditate. Saul stands still and he stood. At times, God gives you ability to operate this faith when they, there is an impossible world before you. So combination of this prayer, the word, and this gift, they are the reason why when it comes to unusual supernatural. I remember one day when I was in Western Pardon. I was going to, so I think I was in 200 level then. They did not give us room in the hostel on time. So most of us were staying, just at the beginning of the semester, we were staying outside the school. Waiting for when they would give us the or week one, week two, they didn't give us, so we're just there. So this evening I was going to the house where I was, and there were this group of courtists. They should be about maybe like 12, 13. They sat in the cycle and they were taking marijuana and some other hard stuff. So I was passing just a bit away from them. And one of them saw and was saying, oh, okay, Come here, bring money, draw whatever you have for us. And I just kept going. I didn't even mind. I knew they were high. And one of them said that uh, when they tell them, say, make you bring money, they do see his back like that of a fisherman. As if that word just landed, the spirit of faith just erupted in me. You know, I just turned in anger and I was going towards that direction. I stand before God's people. All of them fled in different directions. And when I turned back to one of them, ran. And they said, please, 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 please. I know you've seen some of our faces. Don't injure us, please. It was when he left that I asked myself, sorry. <laughs> These guys with weapons, I, what were you planning to do? <laughs> like Samson, go and beat 13 men or Jack Chan or Jet Li. I was just wondering. I, I just doubled myself, just walked away. Because I was, 
But at that moment, I wasn't myself. When you hear of Christians confronting dangers and stopping it, it has to be something beyond you. Momentarily, you must be drunk. But being drunk in the spirit. Otherwise, this is... Did you get what I've said today? Do you know that interestingly, everything I've said now, it starts with, read your Bible, pray every day. Pray every day. Pray. If you kneel down to eat, if you kneel down in the morning devotion, open your Bible. It might take you a bit of time for the interaction to flow. Once that, if you need devotional to step up, once that flow starts, the first thing you will notice is that you begin to know what will happen in the day. Even though you are not functioning per se by gift, it is the word of God that encapsulates all gifts that is at work in you. I spoke in the morning about sins of land. I asked people to pray for understanding. There's a level you get to with the word of God that you know more than the ancient, Psalm 119, because the word itself gives you knowledge. Men and brethren, at a point, it's burning inside you. When you release it, it's with power. Hallelujah. Zuki bala hashadaba digo sele mandaria lega bara zizela trekus. People like Paul Joshua, when they were there, all of them in the house. The first year of the church, I was not married then. For some reasons, that day, no, none of us had money. Shola, that Shola was, was caught in his house. I've said it a few times there before. So they were all taking Gary, and they asked me if I wanted. I said, No, I'm not taking Gary. And I told them that I have money. We are blessed. I was coming from the place of prayer. And they were worried because I was the pastor, they just nodded in agreement, even though there was no sign. So I remember by 9:30 in the night, they're going to sow Gary again. They offered me, I said, No, rich people don't take this because I'm blessed. So they finished it. I remember. By quarter to twelve, as if Satan came down to the room. That the day I said, they said you got money today. Where is the money today? Because I kept saying today. I went to bed sincerely. I looked defeated. Of course, because I was their pastor, they didn't want to look at my face, so they didn't want to embarrass me. Pastor, but he said that everyone went to sleep. So I was looking up at the wall, and I fell asleep. The following morning, six a.m., I saw SMS on my phone. I saw the NPC card, you know. The lady we stopped together, she said, she's in uh, uh, Dublin or so now. That time she just went to Abuja after we finished serving in Kaduna. We found an NPC. She went to Abuja. I came back to Lagos. Said that she worked for a law firm. And I used to speak the word of God to her when we were in NPC. Now we had parted though. And she said they paid her for salary. And she collected the heavy money. The Lord said she sent it to me. She said, I sent it yesterday. Hope you got it. The Bible says, they that observe lying vanity. You know where I was making the mistake? I was looking at a lot. Don't look for any external evidence. If you say in Jesus' name, I am you, that you are looking at the pain is still there. You will return the pain there by your unbelief. Look away. Did you look at what I've just said? So she actually sent the money truly. God moved that to send it, but back then said a lot. Of course, as early as 7 a.m., went to the closest ATM. The next time I with confidence, and money was coming. And I showed it. I said, I told you that we are rich. He's so sweet. Hi, yeah. <laughs> are you with me? Is somebody with me? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You might stand in your room and decree. And in three days, something. Yes. Things can be cancelled and things can be created. They are under the ministry of the world. We will take it a step further next week. But start with practicing what I've just said now. As you pray, go with your Bible. Read scriptures, meditate on it. Sit down a little and let God speak to you through that scripture. It's a starting point. Now, what are you facing exactly now? Maybe I should give you an assignment. Can you go and look for scriptures that cover what you are going through right now? What the Bible says about that situation, and start with that. 
Don't begin to decree. First of all, start by meditating. When the Lord puts light in your heart, speak out that light. Did we all get that? Praise the Lord. Next week, I will get to what worship can do to enhance this and what atmosphere can do to enhance this. And then what happens when an anointed person imparts something into you? These are dimensions. It is true. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Next rise. What a service. I am so certain that God has visited you in a very special way. And you have testimonies to share. You can do that by sending an email to testimonies at householdofdavid.org. And if you joined the service and you've not given your life to Christ or you're not sure of your relationship with Jesus Christ, I would like to lead you in a very simple prayer. I'd like you to say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I want you to take preeminent control of everything that has to do with me. Become my Lord and become my Savior. Hence, I declare from this moment forward, I am no longer a sinner but I am a child of God. The Jesus Christ is Lord of my life in Jesus' precious name. Now, if you said that prayer after me, would like you to send an email to the email that is being displayed on the screen and the number, or you can send a text message to the number that you see on the screen. If you'd like to follow us in the household of David, you can visit any of our social media platforms or our website and know a lot more about us. We would also want to know about you and would like to hear from you. Um, till next time, I would like to say keep living in an atmosphere of God's mercies and God bless you. Get ready for a very phenomenal and a remarkable week. God bless you.